just to welcome each one of you to this session, which is our third um, session um, on the um, series that we've been conducting on participatory methodologies um, that can help us to improve uh, the way we analyze our health systems and therefore improve health systems performance. And uh, we are looking forward to this very third series and we hope that um, at the end of today, we can also do some evaluation of our um, this short course and then uh, we'll see what we should be doing beginning of next year, whether this is something that people would be interested in and uh, hopefully what other tools people might be interested in. And so I'm also um, hoping that most of the people that are online today maybe are familiar with this um, course that we've been doing, but maybe just in case there's somebody who is joining us for the first time, my name is Martina Limbani. So I'm the one that is, um, you know, coordinating this course, um, which basically is um, built on the understanding that I think most of our colleagues, especially professionals that are working, um, you know, in, in the field of health systems or even uh, social welfare, they are always confronted with issues that are usually very complex. And uh, we realize that I think using some of these tools uh, can enable our work, you know, to uh, in terms of like, how do we analyze and, and respond to those issues? So because the issues are complex, they also require, you know, tools that can actually respond to such kind of issues. So that's the main purpose of our webinar. And uh, so we hoping that uh, if more people will be interested in such kind of um, tools, then we'll continue with this series uh, moving on from next year as well. So I will leave it there and uh, hand over to my colleagues, Tumelo and uh, Fidel. They will introduce themselves and then uh, take on the floor. Thank you, over to you, Tumelo and uh, Fidel. And thank you once again for agreeing to take on this session on network analysis. Thank you. All right, thank you, Martina. My name, can you hear me? Can you see me? Yes, perfectly okay. well. All right. All right, so my name is Tumelo Asahai. Uh, I just graduated from UWC. I was doing my PhD there. And I was looking at supervision of community of workers and I am with uh, Dr. Fidel. Fidel, do you want to show your face? I can't see my face. Fidel? Yes, I can see you, I can hear you. Okay, Fidel is on the road, uh, somewhere on the N4 in, in, in Houting. Thank you for stopping and doing this, Fidel. I'm just going to get into the presentation right away. Okay, so this is the third series of the webinar that Martina has been uh, coordinating and we are going to look at social network analysis. So we are going to present two studies, one from where I did my research on supervision and the other that was in the Northwest in Nakamudu Molema. For those who know, this is an African area and Fidel was doing his in Bumalanga in the Hartsiband district. This is the Secunda Standerton area. So what is social network analysis? Uh, given, we've given three definitions there. It's a distinctive set of methods used for mapping, measuring, and analyzing social net interactions between people, groups, and organizations. It's a collection of methods and tools that could be used to study the relationships, interactions, and communications. And it's also a tool to measure and present structural relations accurately and to explain both why they will care and their consequences. So social network analysis is a valuable tool to empirically measure how the network is structured. And when we talk about network, we're talking about, um, this could be people, how people socialize and interact within an organization or different institutions, how they interact um, and work together. 
It's also a tool to analyze relationships that need to be strengthened within a system or within a network. And it's a tool to identify key actors who may be influencers and bridges um, in, the, in the networks. And analyzing structural relations is more important for understanding observed behaviors than age or gender, because sometimes we understand that certain things happen because people are of a certain age or of a certain gender, but we rarely look at how people interact and how those interactions influence um, systems or interventions or processes. And relationships between actors and can be as diverse as friendship, trust, or knowledge transmission. They can also be professional. Structural relations should be viewed as a dynamic process. And where we, 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 we're looking at how, when we say they can be viewed as dynamic, dynamic processes, they can stimulate change or progress within a system or process. So these are the key elements of a, of a social network analysis. It's a research methodology. It's also a software that uses mathematical algorithms. It maps patterns of relationships between individuals, groups, and organizations. And it analyzes how relationships between actors within a system can facilitate or constrain decisions and actions or behavior. So very simply, this is how it's done. And obviously this is not, um, so this is just a brief, um, overview of how it's done. Stage one, you define the list of actors in your, in your network. You define the relationships between actors in, st in stage three and stage in stage two. And in stage three, you analyze the structure of the system. So stage one is just a, a simple survey. You give people um, paper. Stage two, you, you, you ask them to identify who they link to. And stage three is where you use the software to draw the graphs. In, in a bit more detail, under stage one, you list all the stakeholders involved in a system. You complement the list of actors with information collected through interviews with key respondents. So this is when you want to understand why certain people interact in a certain way. And you, by that, you do interviews to get narratives from people that are part of your, of your, of your research. Step three, the interviewees ask, are asked to identify actors based on the selected questions. So this is an example of what I did um, for my study. So I was looking at supervision of community health workers. So I went to several clinics and I wanted to understand how community health workers interact with um, personnel within the facility they are attached to. And I gave each person a form like this. So you, you, first need to, you first need to get a list of everybody who is likely to be part of the network that you want to analyze. So you're going to put in the first column, you're going to list all the names of people that the person is likely to be interacting with or is supposed to be interacting with. And these were the questions I was asking. So for each individual, they will have a list of these people and they will have to answer for each question. So question one would be, I communicate about my work with each of these people. And for, for instance, if it was Martina here and I, would, and I had the, the form, I would say with Martina, I communicate with her once a week, for instance. And Fidel, I never communicate with him. So you would put the numbers that, that represent your, your, your response. In the next four questions, um, I speak about sensitive personal issues with, here you will just put an X that relates to the person that you speak um, or you, you discuss sensitive personal issues with um, and so on it goes. So for, it, for these questions, you just put an X, but for communication, and this could be any other question, you put um, a number to indicate the response. So in stage two, this is where you display the list of actors in a table. You've collected all that data. Now you, the interview, you interview key informants to identify relationships between the actors and you indicate in that table the existence or absence of the relationship between the actors. So from that questionnaire, you then come to this. So you've listed all the people that, um, so these are the people that you, that are, part of your participants, that are your participants. And these would be the people that you listed. 
And for each person, you then put the numbers that they put in the form and you list, you put the access where they are relevant. You see somewhere there are no access, but some there are access. So this is the table that you would create after you capture the data. Once you have the form, you capture the data in a, in a form like, in a table like this. And you, from this, you move your data to something like this, where you now need to prep it for entering it into the software. Um, so you again list everybody that was interviewed and you list everybody that was part of their list and you put um, the label if you want, but the software that we used, that it didn't matter whether you put the label or not, but you had to put it in, in the, because it didn't capture the label, you had to go and put it in the software and then you have to wait your responses. Um, so I won't go in too much into detail about this. Same here, if the person was talking to the other one, it would be one. If they didn't, if they didn't indicate any communication, that, then that would be zero. And you would realize that um, the tables have something called directed. And this is just a one or zero um, relationship. This is where you put the X. And where you put the numbers, those are called undirected um, relationships. And this is just the language that the software uses. So when it comes to the communication part where you were asked, where the participant was asked, how often do you talk to certain people? And they put numbers and this is how you would capture that data. You would capture it and put the, the relevant numbers um, under weight. So this is all Excel. This is the normal Excel that we have. You create your own tables, you input the data here. Once you've done this and you show you've cleaned your data, you need to move your Excel to your .exls, the one that we normally use on everyday basis. You then convert it to a .csv. And once you, connect, you convert it to a .csv, this is how it's going to look like. It puts all the data in one, column you can see there it just puts um, commas next to the to the to the labels and the data but this is just to pre to to make sure that the, the software is able to read um, the data that you have captured stage three this is where you use the software the the software that we were using is Gephi. there are other softwares that you will see um, mentioned in, in other um, general articles. Um, I can't remember what, what the common one is now at the moment, but yeah, this the one we used was Gephi and we used it because it was very simple to use. It's a free software to use. Um, so just to, to, to make note here, in social network analysis, actors or people, we call them nodes and the relationships that exist between them are called ties. And so what we so what what Fidel and I did was a simplistic evalu or, uh, analysis of the social network analysis. But there's more to this. You can calculate things like betweenness, centrality, density, distance, how how, how people are far from each other, how close they are each other. The, the centrality of actors within the network, the density of the network, reachability and all that. So I'm not going to go into the five key network properties. Those you can easily Google and read on. Um, so yeah, so this is stage three, you get into using the Gephi and, and you play around with the software to, to create your diagrams. And this is where Fidel is going to continue from. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, um, Dr. Asehai. Um, so from, uh, just to add a little bit to what uh, she said, um, you can see that, uh, uh, first of all, I'm, I'm asking your permission to keep my camera off because I'm not sure about the strength of the network connectivity. So I'm keeping my camera off with your permission. Um, so the most important part in the social network analysis is the data management. Uh, uh, I think uh, as Tumelo was explaining, taking your survey questionnaire uh, or answers, transform them into uh, Excel data 
and then save them as comma separated uh, data uh, or values. It's those uh, CSV, comma separated values that uh, GAFI, the software is going to read. So you'll have uh, two different uh, kind of type of uh, data sets that you need to import into the GAFI. One is about the nodes, meaning all the, 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 the actors, the people that you identified. And then the second one is uh, the ages, meaning all the ties, the relationship that you identify. So these are two different data that you import into uh, GAFI software. And uh, in GAFI software, you will come up with something like this. There are steps uh, to be used, uh, just some algorithm out to, to reach these uh, graphs, and then uh, you can put uh, some interpretation and so on. So next slide, please. So uh, I'm going to present this case study from, uh, uh, it's a published paper from uh, my PhD. My PhD was about uh, accountability. And uh, at this point, uh, I wanted to, to find out, um, to explore if, and to discuss the pattern of collaboration uh, between uh, managers and providers uh, uh, in uh, actually two sub, sub district and the district office in the in Pumalanga province. Actually, I'm on my way there to, for, to present some of the results. Uh, that's why I stop on the roads. Uh, so this is that was the paper, and uh, it's based on uh, uh, the idea that accountability for maternal is uh, collaborative. Um, it's relational. Uh, there's a book by uh, Moncrief uh, that she spoke about relational accountability. Uh, very interesting. And as I said, the aim was to document the collaboration dynamics. Uh, and to see the variation, because it said that uh, the, the level of collaboration can uh, be related to uh, the variation in the performance for services that is being provided. Next slide. So uh, it's the target population in our study was uh, uh, the frontline health professionals. And this consists of uh, doctors, nurses, uh, managers, uh, nutritionists, uh, information managers, uh, both at uh, district hospitals, um, uh, primary care facilities, and uh, uh, district program managers. Um, so we examine the role and the positions of these actors um, to try to understand the relationship between them and the overall structure of the new network uh, looking to uh, collaboration. Next slide. So we conducted, a, it was a cross-sectional survey uh, using social network analysis methods. Uh, we had uh, 42 respondents that were involved uh, in, uh, uh, with uh, maternal and newborn and child health uh, coordination structures. We, as I'm talking about uh, the monitoring and response units and uh, PIP and CHIP, uh, uh, these are perinatal uh, programs. So these actors uh, were those attending uh, this uh, meeting to see the way they are collaborating. And we look at uh, different domains of collaboration based on uh, the literature, look at communication, look at professional supports, and we look at, on uh, the, the way of sharing new ideas of innovation. The network also, we try to understand different interfaces uh, uh, between, uh, let's say, district and sub-district uh, across uh, different levels of uh, service delivery, meaning uh, hospitals, uh, primary care facilities, and uh, community level. And also we looked at the interface uh, of uh, uh, different professional categories meaning how doctors interact with doctors and nurses and nurses and so on. So these were the three interfaces. Um, and at the district level, we, the result we look at the level of the connectivity and also the central role of uh, uh, program managers. Uh, so I'll show you in, in, in the graph uh, how connected 
uh, the different uh, units in the district are, are and the, the central role of uh, managers. So in this graph, you can see this is uh, for the district level, meaning uh, the three sub-districts, uh, we call them, we group them into clusters. Uh, actually, it's uh, two sub-districts, one sub-district has two district hospitals. Uh, what is uh, in the purple, green, and in blue. And in the middle, you see what is uh, kind of brown or orange. These are district program managers uh, playing a central role in bringing together the different uh, units or different clusters, different sub-districts. And uh, you can see for all these graphs, almost the, the district uh, program managers of district uh, level are uh, kind of a central connectors, like what you call in the term of uh, social network analysis, uh, the boundary spanner. Um, they are kind of in the middle, bring all other units together. Next slide. So at this, uh, it said the resulted the sub-district level. You can see the connectivity between different actors, green uh, doctors, uh, people are nurses, and other uh, in um, in reds. Uh, so this graph show uh, first of all the, the connectivity between all these uh, actors, but also you can see the clustering around professional uh, categories. You see, green doctors are more likely to collaborate with doctors and nurses are with nurses, and. Uh, uh, in cluster four, you see can, kind of, uh, it, it, it has spread a little bit. We show you uh, what happened in this uh, uh, sub-district. Uh -huh. So, and then we see the central, there's some actors that are central. Uh, some of them are CEOs of hospitals, some are medical officers, some are nursing managers, uh, playing a central role of connecting uh, other, other professionals. Next slide. And uh, yeah, on this slide here, it's uh, just to show you an example in one sub-district. Uh, you see uh, the central role of the CEO playing a, 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 a kind of a, 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 a leadership or a connective connector, a central connector between uh, all other uh, units. What is in ELO are primary healthcare facilities. In green are hospitals actors, and in orange or brown, it's, it's those at the district level. So you see that in this sub-district, because of the intervention, the intervention was the monitoring and response units. Before that, you can see, for example, people were working in a very, uh, separate way. Uh, so everyone, primary care facilities were doing their own hospitals uh, sometimes, and they were kind of a blaming game all around. But with the intervention, it creates a, a synergy and high level of collaboration, mostly between uh, primary care facilities and hospitals, and uh, between across the professional groups, uh, doctors, uh, EMS, uh, nurses working together with uh, nutritionists or allied health professionals. So that was quite very interesting. And I emphasize all the central role of uh, the CEO playing kind of a binding, bringing all the people together uh, to create uh, a synergy of collecting, uh, collaboration. And you can see the, in the white, there are uh, boards. Uh, these are chairperson of the uh, hospital boards, they are community representative. Uh, they are parts of the network on that collaboration to represent the views of the community within the network, also to take any decision that is being taken by uh, the hospital cluster into the community for any uh, intervention that needed to involve the community. So this is a kind of a summary of uh, uh, this uh, uh, study that uh, we, we did. And uh, for any details, you are welcome to see the paper. I'm not sure if this is the, the last the next slide. The, any next slide? OK, yeah. So that was a, a briefly a summary of uh, the application of uh, 
the social network analysis uh, to try to see uh, the patterns of collaboration among frontline health professionals and uh, how that relates to uh, the work uh, of maternal and newborn and child health, both at the district level, uh, district hospital, primary care facilities, and extension to the communities. Thank you. Thank you, Fidel. So this is how I use social network, social network analysis in my study. And this is the paper that was published from my PhD, The Supervisory Relationships of Community Health Workers in Primary Health Care. Um, so in terms of supportive supervision, it remains a key challenge to the sustainability of community health worker programs globally, even in South Africa. So the aim of this particular area of my study was to identify critical actors and the relationships in the supervisory system of the word-based outreach teams, which is what you call community health workers in South Africa. So it was also a cross-sectional quantitative study. There were no interviews that were done for this part of the study. It was done in one sub-district, in one district, in, it was one district uh, done in one sub-district of the district. It was 37 community health workers from five outreach teams two facility, attached to two facilities. We had three outreach team leaders who were supervisors of community health workers. We had five um, PHC facilities, two from the two facilities but, and three from other facilities and then two local area managers. These are people who supervise a cluster of, of um, facilities within a sub-district. So these were the five questions I was asking, and these are what I showed you in the first um, data collection from the first one that I put up. And these were the different networks that I got from using my data. And the first one is the communication. You remember that I was asking how often do you communicate? And you would see in the red community of workers were communicating mostly with each other, with the team leader and the operational manager or the facility manager being the central person in this, in this, um, in this network. And you see the different categories of nurses and managers sitting in the periphery of the, or on the outside of the network. And these are professional nurses, that is the focal person, the person who coordinates the, the program within the sub-district. And this is the, the project officer, the person who coordinates the MPO within the sub-district and the enrolled nurses and so on. And here's the sub-district manager who is far from this um, communication network. And the thicker the line, represents how often people communicated with each other. So you see how the thinner it becomes, the further the people are away from the network. And then the middle, the last two, these are the question around um, the person who helps you resolve challenges in your work. And this is what the, one of the graphs showed. Again, the team leader was the, uh, the main or the central person in this network with community health workers indicating that they, they rely on the team leader to resolve their challenges and the facility staff is mostly removed from this network. Um, so when you, and similarly to line authority, line authority was asking that who checks your work um, as expected. So this is more who, who is your line authority, who, who do you report to, but we didn't ask it like that. So the team leader was also the central person with community health workers indicating that um, they mostly report or team, the team leader checks their work. And you'll see that um, the, 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 the facility staff is not listed here because they were not identified as people who checks their work. Only one ENA uh, or enrolled nurse was identified by one community health worker. They could be having a special relationship going on from maybe from the same village or maybe their relatives or friends or they know each other from somewhere. And then you have the facility manager high here and the local area manager here. So the team leader would say the facility manager checks her work and also the local area, area manager checks her work checks their work, but mostly um, facility, facility staff was not, um, 
you know, they're, they're not engaged. It showed that, so the analysis showed that facility staff in general are not engaged in the work that the community of workers do. Um, so then I did um, a simple graph to show the different um, res uh, results from the different facilities. And again, it showed that the team leader uh, was the person who was mostly identified to be, you know, as the person that community health workers report to, also identified as the person who gives the community health workers um, feedback and who resolves their challenges. And sometimes here, other community health workers, you know, they helped each other in resolving issues. Um, personal matters, not so much the team leader, but it, it showed that community health workers relied on each other to tell each other personal issues or sensitive issues in their personal life. So from the from my from my study, it showed the, the, the results showed that the team leaders were critical actors and the main source of supportive supervision for community health workers and not so much the facility staff, even though sometimes they work within the facility. And there was dense communication and cohesion among community health workers themselves. Although there were notable exceptions in some, in some facilities, um, most other actors in the primary health care system were not actively engaged in the supervision of community health workers and their team leaders. Um, and this was represented, this, this, this complemented data that I found from my first um, phase of the, of, the, of the study where it was revealed that there was dysfunctional um, relationships between community health workers and facility managers, but we really needed to see the, the, present, the representation or graphical representation and how the dynamics uh, played out within the different relationships that were between community health workers and the facility staff. Um, so in conclusion, the social network analysis provides a mechanisms and mechanism to uncover the nature of relationships and key actors in collaborative dynamics as, as Fidel has shown in his study. And you, you, you can use social network analysis, analysis to identify strengths and weaknesses within the system using the relationships and the people that are within the system. It offers insights on the level of frag fragmentation and the need to strengthen cohesion and improve collaboration. Um, Social networks, whether professional or personal, they affect perceptions within systems and they, they, they affect how people believe things are in the system or in processes. Um, and also it validates and serves to quantify previous qualitative observations, like I say in my study, on the limits within a system or process. But you can go further and do interviews to try and understand why people um, why the, the networks are the way they are, um, you know, given the graphs that, that have been, or the diagrams that are produced from the, from the software. I think that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions? Wow, great. Thank you so much, Dr. Asagai and uh, Dr. Mukinda. Thank for you. the great presentations. Yeah, so we will just open up for questions now. Uh, if people have questions, please just raise up your hand um, or you can put in the chat, but also you can just speak since we are not uh, so many of us. So you feel free just to, you know, say something or whichever way you find most comfortable. Um, just check to... Okay, so um, there's a question here from Charles uh, to, to Melo. It says, purely for curiosity, what was the area or subdiscipline of your PhD study? Uh, you are muted, to Melo. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Um, so my, my, I'm going to stop sharing now. Okay. Yeah, so my, my 
my study was looking at, it was supervision of community health workers and trying to um, develop a framework of supervision in a, a, a district level framework for supervision. So that was my, that was my overall topic of the study. Um, yeah, so maybe just to add on that, uh, if you say maybe some discipline of your PhD, I would call maybe health systems. Yeah, health system, of course. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You, any other questions? There's a hands. Oh, I think that's Charles again. Is that a new hand, Charles, or is it the same question that you just I've, asked? I've lowered it. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. I'm just trying to check if there are any other hands. Yeah, I can see. And yes, yeah, from Tresia. Everybody, I'm Tricia Matladi. I'm one of the operational managers here in Western Cape substructure. Um, yeah, we Northern uh, Tigerberg substructure. Uh, I'm very happy for the presentation today because it's more about collaboration. And I actually are so excited to be, because I'm recently new in this um, area that I'm managing. And um, we had this question specific in the um, uh, staff satisfactory survey where we identify that the staff um, of our site um, scored very low in that question. And I'm just going to read the question to you. The question was, how do you rate col the collaboration between the different functions, teams in within the organization? And that uh, uh, um, reaction from the staff was very, very low. So like last week, I, I gave it back to the staff and I, just to, 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 to work out some actions, how can we improve as managers on that level? So just listening to uh, Miss, um, let me not pronounce your surname wrong, as a high doctor, just listening to you, it's so excited for me because now I can make use of the system that you um, um, presented today. So I just want to say thank you for that. Hmm. Thank you, Tricia. Yeah. And if she wants, we can we can work with her and see how we can assist her and maybe help her develop the the form, and then we can do the analysis together and just um, she could you know work out what's happening within the mm -hmm. that network that particular network. Yes, talk. Uh, yes, because we really, you know, the answers they gave you, it was very surprising that they feel that they um, there's no really communication coming to them. And um, there's a few things that they wrote. So we're still working to, 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 to get that. Uh, they, first, they're understanding what is collaboration. You know, that is one of the questions that I gave them. I thank you if you are willing to help me through the process. You've seen my email address, and uh, I hope you can help me. Thank you. All right. So we can definitely try to facilitate that. Yeah. That's really the purpose of this course, that we, there should be that bridging between us as researchers and then practitioners see how best we can support your work in the field. Um, there's a say, hand from Ladlasi. Ladislas. Yes, please. Thank you so much. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Awesome. Uh, my apologies. I joined in a little bit late um, just because I was rushing for lunch and I think it skipped off uh, my mind. But nevertheless, uh, I think I was able to to listen in for, for much of the, the last part. And uh, I must say, I think this, this is exactly what I've always been interested in. Um, so where I work, um, first of all, I, I work, I'm, I'm based in Zambia and I work for an organization called Socha. And so we work with farmers. So what we're interested in is to see some kind of linkages in terms of um, where the input, where the farmers are getting the majority inputs and just to understand the kind of network 
that goes mm. around amongst the farmers. And so social network analysis, I think is one of uh, the most essential components that we've been uh, thinking about as an organization. And so I think it was very interesting to see those uh, uh, pictures, demonstrations that um, uh, Dr. Dr. Kendi just presented. I think um, now my, my, my question is, um, are you planning to do another session where you would probably maybe run us through how to perform some kind of uh, maybe basic analysis of how to do that kind of, uh, that sort of, of, of work? Thank you. Thank you for, for that question. Mm -hmm. um, was that you, Dr. Mkinda? Okay, yes. To... So uh, I can give uh, some of the answers. Uh, actually, if you read the paper that uh, I've shared uh, today, uh, there are some measures uh, that uh, we, we run, like uh, the centrality, the density, uh, all the things, all other me the measures that we were named. But also uh, we are busy with another uh, study where actually I'm trying to apply uh, all these uh, measurements. So for someone who needs, if they, there's a need for a session to, to explain because this, everything is happening within the software, uh, GAFI software, even other, other software that people are, are using, but we use uh, mostly GAFI and I can run all the measurements that uh, you, you want to based on your research questions and what you you want to, to show and uh, yeah everything uh, yeah we can always uh, support each other and show how to go about it uh, and uh, how to interpret those measurements i think that's also the most important thing uh, uh, the, the software you can just click and it can give you outputs of the measurements that you are looking for but also uh the way of interpreting now that will be based on the way you design your questionnaire, the direction of your questionnaire. Remember when a Dr. Asahai was presenting about uh, the directed and undirected. So that depends on the way you are asking the questions. Then we'll put directed or undirected. So if there can be any other session to, to go now in depth, I think we can always uh, uh, try to organize that. Yeah. Dr. Mampe? Yeah, sure. Um, I think it's it's the same thing that Tricia was talking about. So we perhaps we can send uh, or we can organize with Martina maybe in the next, uh, I don't know when are you going to have your next session, but we could uh, collaborate and see how we can try to work, work with them to, to um, understand the question mm -hmm. and how the question can be used to um, do the social network analysis, and then we can develop the form for them to fill out with the participants. And then the session will then be, how do we uh, import and work out the diagrams in the software? I think that will work okay. best. Okay. Yeah, yeah so sure. Um, and uh, that's what I, I actually mentioned also at the beginning that uh, we wanted, maybe we'll take a few minutes before we end the, the session just to see what uh, people actually would like to get from these um, you know, sessions. So if people maybe will give us an, a, an idea of maybe which other methods they would like us to go into details, then uh, some from maybe sometime next year, then we can organize like specific sessions where we want to practically take people through the process. So whereby maybe we can have the first session I don't know, we can organize it over maybe a few consecutive weeks where maybe the first uh, session we say, okay, each one of, the, uh, of, of you brings in your specific research questions. We can work in groups and then help you like how best you can develop that. And then maybe you go back, uh, practically do some interviews or you know, uh, fill in those forms that would have been given in the first session. And then maybe we come back after, I don't know, maybe two weeks, however, we can pass it. Um, and then you come back, we say, okay, now here's your information. And then we, we work together in a, in a collaborative way where others also may not necessarily have a project, but maybe they can also learn from what the others will be doing. Uh, maybe at that particular time, they don't necessarily have a project that they want to work on. 
but that would be more of a hands-on kind of uh, skills that people are, are getting. Because sometimes just reading the paper and then going to do it by yourself, it can actually be not that easy. I can see like, uh, uh, is it, uh, Ladislas, like like you are in Zambia, uh, you know, so if, if you have something going on there. And then I will go. David's so, mic is on. Oh, that's David. Yeah, so that's kind of my, my idea, but we, we are free to discuss like how best would want to follow this because I know there are other people who are not in this session that probably would have loved also to be here and learn more about this. So this um, year, this three series that we have done was basically meant to kind of stimulate some discussion and see how people think about this. And then from next year, then we can begin to uh, develop something that is more concrete that people then can use it like more hands-on. Because I realized that once you just make this presentation, people go, they might not really be able to use it. Even if you just give them a whole lot of information for one to start processing and understanding it, it might take longer. But if you have more practical sessions where you take through them process by process, you do this and then maybe people go back and then you meet again in another session. Maybe you do the follow-up, you do maybe the kind of the analysis until we are done. So we can sort of um, come up with a program of how best we can run those kind of sessions so that by the end uh, of the whole thing, people go back home with a, a good picture of uh, whatever question they had and what results they can get from there with their own social network analysis of the specific issue they are wanting to understudy. I don't know how that um, feels to us, but that's the understanding or the, the kind of vision that I'm, I, I had. I see Tracy, you have your hand on again, yeah? Is that correct? No, I'm just giving you applause for that. <laughs> but I think it went like an end. It's not the end. Um, just say uh, I agree. Yes. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay, Dintler? Um, thank you very much, Martin. And thank you to both Fidel and Dumelo. Um, I'm sorry, towards the end, I could hardly hear anything. Um, but I, I really like your idea, Martina. I think for me personally, and I, and I believe this goes for other colleagues that are here as well, um, you know, having a more practical hands-on session would really be great, especially among um, or, or facilitated by colleagues who have actually done and used some of these tools, because they can also speak to us um, about some of the key challenges and how to avoid or address them. I think for me, the other thing that I'm really interested in um, and hoping to get through these sessions if we continue them is, um, you know, one of the things that we really seek out for is the a very deliberate participation um, of the people that we do the research with, um, as opposed to us just being researchers within our health systems that really um, how we use these tools with them to the point that they also uh, make sense of them um, for their own for their own work, if you would. Um, so, so yeah, I, I guess I'm just really reiterating and agreeing that it will really be wonderful to to run with the idea that you have, Martina. Thank you so much, Dento. Yeah, so we will definitely try to um, get towards that. And that has really been the idea that, uh, you know, we go into those workshops or conferences, we present this information and at the end of the day, people are like, wow, this is very interesting, but how can we actually do this? How can we actually use this? Because it looks a bit complicated and, you know, on our own, we won't be able to, you know, use it. Hence, I thought, maybe let's try and see how we can, you know, best use our, um, you know, this kind of space where we interact with practitioners, come up with some courses where we run through this to the end. So first we thought, let's 
first of all, just try to present it and see if people are interested and they think they can use if it's at all um, use, uh, usable in some way. And from what we are getting, it looks like people would be interested. So definitely, I think uh, next year we'll be planning something more practical and just also try to get as more people as possible who can actually participate in the session. Um, there's a question here um, from Zwama. It says, thank you both. Very valuable analysis with so much potential. How were some of these questions phrased to the participants? Could you give an example where this was tricky or sensitive? And how do you deal with some of the sensitivities around relationships? Mm -hmm. so I get right. that. <laughs> yeah, I can go first. So mm -hmm. the first thing that you need to remember is that each person gets a form to fill out in their own space. Mm -hmm. So they, the next person will not know how you responded to the question. So first thing is confidentiality around the questions and the forms. Um, and you don't tell the next person what the, the or you don't, you know, it's, it's like any other interview, everything is confidential. Mm -hmm. I did not have any, um, I would say sensitive or tricky questions um, or pe where people felt uncomfortable. Um, so my questions were just, how do you, how often do you communicate? Who checks your work? How, who gives you feedback, um, who resolves your challenges, and who do you speak to around about um, sensitive personal issues? I don't think it was really, um, they're not very sensitive, but I made sure that every, every person filled out their own, because every person has to get their own form with the listed, uh, with the names of people who um, they have to, you know, take on and say, this one I talk to, or this one I don't, this one checks my work and so on. So it, everything is confidential, but I, in my work, I didn't find anything that was tricky or sensitive that I needed to deal with. You know? Yeah, exactly. So um, I don't know, one of my questions was about uh, uh, seeking uh, support on um, personal matters. I don't know if that is sensitive uh, on, uh, it's, it's a kind of uh, on um, things that are not work related, uh, emotional support. Yeah, so uh, confidentiality is, uh, is key. And if you see the data that the graphs we presented, all the nodes, all the actors are being allocated a code. So no one can know, can identify or guess who is who, who gave what to who. Uh, at least maybe the, even the, the, the title and put a CEO, one can also yeah, the three CEOs on the three areas where I, I, I did my research, but they cannot really say this is this one or this is that one, it's not identifiable. So if it goes again through all the process from asking questions, even though uh, the questionnaire are not anonymous, that's one thing. Uh, people need to specify the names because it allow you to allocate codes to each name and to see with whom they are collaborating. And uh, now at the end, it, it will only be uh, the codes that will be reported. Yeah. So you just need to be to stay in the limit of the ethics when answering or dealing with uh, sensitive questions yeah thank you thank you so much fidel i don't know if we have any other question i can't see any other now if not then i would like us just to take a quick evaluation poll uh before we we leave um let me just see a comment here Okay, it's, it's just, uh, I think Mr. Zwama, um, just saying thank you for clarifying on the confidentiality in terms of the process taken. So we have a poll, I think, in front of us, if we can just fill in, and because we, this information will definitely help us in planning for the next uh, phase 
of this process. I guess people are still filling in. Just give um, one more minute. Martina, I'm going to have load shedding at two. So if okay. I if I'm cut, then yeah, just know okay. that it's load shedding. Thank you. We appreciate you so thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. And, and best of cheese for the load shedding. <laughs> So I think for, for the last question where we are saying, is there any specific tool that you're interested in? I see that most of us have actually indicated that yes. So we would like you to indicate in the chat quickly what the specific tool is that you would like us to you know, um, work on. And there are some actually that we have not presented, but you would want maybe also like to, to have them presented sometime later because it, I think it's an overview of the different tools and methods. In case you are interested in one of them, also you can just put them in the chat. So we would really appreciate if you can show us that, and then that will help us a lot planning for next year. There's a hand from Tasia again. Okay. There's a hand from Tasia. Hi, Tasia. You can. Sorry, Doc. Um, no. Uh, um, I just wanted to ask if uh, we're going to get this um, um, trainings again. If we can, if you can plan it again for Wednesdays, it fit me very well because on Wednesdays there's no not so many meetings that we are having. Uh, if we can get it again on like days of Wednesdays for next year. Thank you. All right. No problem. Thanks for raising that as well. Okay, so we have a few who have indicated which specific tool they would want to get more information on. Um, we'll still give one more minute for others also to indicate so that we have a, a fair understanding that we can already see some bias towards the social network analysis. And we will definitely be doing that. Okay. All right. Um, well, I guess we have quite a, a bit uh, in terms of what um, tools people are interested in. It's, um, I mean, it's still open if people want to 
talk to us directly, send us an email. We are also actually very um, open for any suggestions or any interest that people have uh, in terms of what tools they would want to learn and use in uh, within their fields. And we can try organize that. But I think for now, what is coming out clearly is the social network analysis and others are interested also in the causal loop diagrams. So I think I can almost say that I think mm -hmm. beginning next year, definitely the approach will change. This year was just meant to kind of introduce the tools and see if people feel like they can actually use them. So from now on, next year, we'll focus more on how to now practically take people through uh, these tools. So people can come with them. So we'll make it like sort of practical people bring in their own issue or what they want to study on. And then uh, from there, we go step by step and people can go back if there's need to collect more information or whatever it needs to be done. And then we come back and the next, if we have to use a software, then we all do it together and then groups or as a whole one group, depending on the numbers of people and everybody has their own laptop working with their own thing and yeah will help each other through the process uh, at a more practical level. So if there are any other questions, uh, you are free to raise them. But other than that, I think um, that's it, I think, from us. Just to say thank you so much for um, supporting this course. Um, and we really look forward to working with you again next year. And uh, hopefully for those of you who are in the field and think that maybe there are other colleagues that might benefit also to, uh, you know, in this course, please do invite them for next year so that then we have more people. If we have more people learning uh, how to use them, they will also impact others. It's supposed to be actually a multiplier um, effect. So we share it with you and we hope that after that, you are also going to share with others and help them through this the, uh, a similar process that we have taken you through. So thank you. Thank you so much. Is it Tracy again? You have uh, um, something to say, please? I'll give you the floor before we close. I do. I do. Are you going to send us the recording again? Yes, yes. I think Zianda is here. Zianda, you're here, right? She's the one that usually does. So she'll probably do just a little bit of editing, just to make sure everything is clear. And then she will send it to everybody. Have you attended any of the other sessions before? Yes, I did. I, I attended the last time the decision making. OK. In yes, I did that one. But I missed and the one in, in early October month. I did okay. the first one, and then this one now, and yeah. Okay. I, I will appreciate it if doctors sent me that one, because as I said to you, I need to work with that collaboration question that I'm still working with my staff. So yeah. I, yeah, I really want to use from this system that Dr. Safai yeah. has explained. Okay, yeah. Thank you very Leander, much. Leander has just confirmed that she is going to be sending the recording to everybody. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Once again, uh, Dr. Mukinda and Dr. Asahai, thank you so much for gracing the session and it was really beautifully done. I enjoyed it and um, I look forward for more practical sessions beginning of next year and we'll be communicating to everyone on this. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Much, thank you very much, Dr. Lembani. Thank you for having us. Thank okay, you. thank you everybody for participation. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Bye. Thank you.